Hey everyone, how's it going? I am Zerakon and I am back once again. Today is another Was It Good video. The topic will be the 2004 series, The Batman. Now, you may or may not be familiar with the series. Um, I actually remember hearing about it one Christmas evening from a relative who said that a new Batman show was being made. I was interested in it, but since I had been watching only the animated series, I wasn't sure how I would enjoy it. Flash forward a year from that though, uh, I was watching it on Kids WB every Saturday at 10.30am. Good times. But was the show actually good? Yeah, let's dig right into it. So, the show comes from the same people, or at least the same person who made the Jackie Chan Adventures. While I didn't really watch that series, I can see the mark that it left on the art design, which I must say is very nice. The animation is just as good, which is really good since the series is pretty action-oriented. Now what I mean by that is that pretty much every character in the show is a fighter in some sense, even ones which you wouldn't consider to be... Uh, you wouldn't consider to be a fighter or a brawler in that regard. I mean, especially since they haven't been in any previous material. For example, the Penguin knows martial arts, and the Riddler is not afraid to get into a beatdown. I mean, seriously, he, like, beats Batman with a cane. Well, a staff, I should say. Uh, but yeah, the Joker is also a highly acrobatic acrobatic character and fights in the most bizarre manner which at least in that sense makes sense since he's deranged but he's just really acrobatic you'll, you'll just have to like see for yourself but even with this unusual decision the action scenes are good they look fluid and are very eye-catching it satisfies everyone who wants some action in their saturday morning cartoons the writing for the series is also good the development of Batman being a vigilante being hunted by the police uh, in the first season to working beside them was pretty good. Well, also to happen sort of in the second season as well, but eh. Part of that design change comes from the characters Ellen Yin and Ethan Bennett, both original characters for the series. Both are cops working together. Ethan believes that Batman is needed for the city, while Yin wants to bring him in. Bennett also serves as the Harvey Dent of the series, where he's also Bruce's best friend uh, ever since you know, they were kids. This is important because he eventually becomes Clayface due to the Joker. Uh, after he goes off the deep end and commits himself to a life of crime, it almost looked like he would just be another member of the rogues gallery. However, he was able to redeem himself later on in the series, which was great for bringing closure towards the character. I wish I could say the same for Yin, though. At the end of Season 1, she begins to be a believer, and Season 2 shows her working with Batman being his secret partner. But they completely ruined it by not giving her any sort of resolution. At the end of Season 2, Commissioner Gordon is introduced. Where was he the whole time? Why hasn't he done anything in regards to Batman? Who knows? However, at this point, this is the last time we see her. We have no idea what happens to her afterwards. There's no resolution. There's She's just gone. Like There's no mention of her at all after that point. And the problem with this is the fact that she's had such great character development, has had such an impact on the story from, working, from hitting Batman to working with him, but she's just gone. I mean, if she were a recurring character like, say, Harvey Bullock from the 90s series, her stepping away for a while or not appearing again wouldn't have been so bad but she was integral to the part to the story so far so that rubs me a bit at this point the series d starts to go downhill a bit don't get me wrong there's still stuff enjoyable but it doesn't feel as good it was a pretty bold move to make barbara gordon batman's first sidekick and her origin story is pretty good however her character wasn't so good I get that she's a teenager and stuff, but she comes off as an annoying Batman fangirl than an endearing up-and-coming sidekick. Going back to the 90s series, Batgirl had to emulate Batman's persona because she thought it would help prove her father's innocence. After that, however, while she would cross paths with the dynamic duo, she did set herself apart. 
how <laughs> here though we ha she craves to be a sidekick and prove how useful she is to him even though there are times when she does bumble a bit and you know it actually reminds me of buddy from the incredibles just because of how fixated she is robin also felt underwhelming i mean while I, I while I am accustomed to wisecracks and banter from the sidekick in other media, here he felt just as annoying as Batgirl. The confrontation with Tony Zuko lacked the punch that the 90s series had. Now, I do appreciate Robin going to save Zuko from falling to his death. And also, I can appreciate the irony, the fact that he saved uh, Zuko from the fate that his parents went through. But the scene did focus too much on Batman than Robin. I mean, Batman was the one pretty much about maybe 60% of the time fighting Zuko. Uh, and granted, this is a fresh Robin who isn't as experienced as opposed to the seasoned Robin who had more crime fighting experience and could handle himself. But I feel like Batman stole the scene away from Robin. The last season was pretty much just a gathering point for the Justice League. As far as the other aspects of the show, uh, the music was pretty decent. The opening theme for season 1 and 2 was awesome. I loved that chill, mystery rock music that it had. The theme for seasons 3 onwards, though, was not as impressive. It had vibes of the 60s era Batman, which in itself isn't a bad thing, but it doesn't fit the tone of the show, especially once you look at it from how it was previously. Uh, it would have been more suited for, say, Brave and the Bode. The character motifs are noticeable, but aren't really memorable, with the exception of Batgirls, whose theme ties into the season's 3-5 through five intro. The legacy episode, where an older Batman, Nightwing, and Oracle are fighting Mr. Freeze, as well as the Gotham PD in the future, was a great episode. I enjoyed seeing how the how the group had changed uh, over time as everyone's sort of like older, and I also liked their interaction. To me, this sh this episode is the equi is this show's equivalent of the new Batman Adventures Legends of the Dark Knight episode. Like that's how good I thought it was. Another thing I have to admire is the usage of characters who don't or didn't receive much attention in mainstream uh, media. For example, I had never heard of Phosphorus. Well, granted, he's Dr. Phosphorus in the comics, uh, Black Mask, or Clue Master until I had watched the show. And while this isn't exactly new, uh, the Timverse series did allow fans to learn more about less mainstream characters. I still have to applaud it. With the exception of Dark Tomorrow, uh, a discussion that's in its own can of worms, Black Mask has never been in the mainstream display previously. Heck, to my knowledge, Arkham Origins would be the next project that took crack at portraying him. Clue Master was so obscure that I actually thought he was an original character when I first saw him. Now, you all can actually laugh at me. I didn't get serious about reading comics until I was like 15 or so. Or rather, before that point, I was only reading the all-ages Marvel comics with a little bit of Ultimate Spider-Man here and there. It was another year before I went back to the older stuff, so go ahead, you can laugh at me. It's okay. But getting back on track, other notes I did make about the show include how wonderful Cash Tenkinson was. I can't explain it, you just have to watch it for yourself and see what quality he brings to the show. And being voiced by Patrick Warburton made it even better. Also, I love and actually, you know what, actually, no, 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 no. I love, yeah, so I love how unprotected Batman's gadgets are in season three from Batgirl. She is able to override the Bat Psycho's autopilot with the push of a button and enter the bat bot just by getting on top of it. Seriously. It opens up for her just because she got next to it. This is the same season where Joker couldn't use the utility belt because it had a biometric lock on it. Granted, it could be argued that the lock was added because of what happened in season 1 with Catwoman, but even then, she had to tinker around with it to get it to work. 
the point I'm trying to make is that the fact that Batgirl gained access to this stuff, which arguably could be more dangerous than his utility belt, that fact in itself is a plot hole that is worth mentioning. But getting rid of all of that, though, overall, was the show good? I'd have to say yes. While there are a few rough spots here and there, the show was underrated. Outside of the relative who mentioned it to me, I have never talked to anyone about this show. Like, no one I know has ever heard of the show. Uh, sometimes, you know, I mean, uh, sometimes, no, I've seen stuff on social media. Well, on YouTube, really, I could say. And that's really only because I actually look for the stuff. But no one really, no one's really talked about it. Seasons 1 and 2 were excellent, and while not as good in my opinion, the latter episodes are still enjoyable, especially with the Legacy one. I definitely recommend giving it a go. I hope you're able to find as much enjoyment out of it as I did, but yeah. So with all that being said, that wraps up things for this video. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you watch The Batman, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Also, with my fall semester starting back up soon, uh, the Was It Good video series will be going to the one per month format I originally planned instead of like how it was previously where there were like two or three in a month. So everyone, until next time, I am Zerikon signing off. Have a good one.